The Old Testament lesson for this, the third Sunday after Trinity, is written in the seventh chapter of the prophet Micah, beginning at the 18th verse. Who is a God like you, pardoning iniquity and passing over transgressions for the remnant of his inheritance? He does not retain his anger forever because he delights in steadfast love. He will again have compassion on us. He will tread our iniquities underfoot. You will cast all your sins into the depths of the sea. You will show faithfulness to Jacob and steadfast love to Abraham, as you have sworn to our fathers from the days of old. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle lesson and sermon text for today is written in the first chapter of St. Paul's first letter to St. Timothy, beginning at the 12th verse. I thank him who has given me strength, Christ Jesus our Lord, because he judged me faithful, appointing me to his service, through, though formerly I was a blasphemer, persecutor, and insolent opponent. But I received mercy because I had acted ignorantly in unbelief, and the grace of our Lord overflowed for me with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the foremost. But I received mercy for this reason, that in me, as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display his perfect patience as an example to those who were to believe in him for eternal life. To the King of ages, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 15th chapter. Now the tax collectors and sinners were all drawing, drawing near Jesus, and the Pharisees and the scribes grumbled, saying, this man receives sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he has lost one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the open country and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and his neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who need no repentance. Or what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one coin, does not light a lamp and sweep the house and seek diligently until she finds it? And when she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so I tell you, there is joy before the angels of God over one sinner who repents. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Grace, peace, and mercy be unto you from God our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. My dear friends in Christ, inspired by the Holy Spirit, St. Paul proclaims to you and to me this morning this message. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. This is not a reasonable thought, according to our human way of thinking. One would more reasonably expect 
that Christ Jesus came into the world to condemn and punish and destroy sinners. After all, is that not what we deserve? Ask your unchurched neighbor and he will tell you that Christ came into the world to teach sinners to no longer be sinners. He came into the world to teach sinners to be nice to one another. But no, the blessed truth is that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners. Sinners like you and me. You've heard it often, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. St. Matthew in his gospel records Jesus' own words re concerning the heart of every man, every woman, every boy, every girl. When Jesus says, for out of the heart come evil thoughts, murders, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false testimony, slander. These, says Jesus, are what makes a man unclean. That's quite a list, is it not? It is an apt description of us, although it may be possible that you haven't actually physically done these or some of these things. But do not deceive yourself. Your heart and your mind are constantly bent towards sin. Perhaps you will remember how Jesus taught us that to be angry is to commit murder. And to look with lust is to commit adultery. Consider the Ten Commandments in summary. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. Go down the list and check them off. Let's see. Do the dishes. Check. Take out the trash. Check. Love the Lord your God with every ounce of being. Sadly, no. No check. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. No. Sadly, no. No check. It's no because you are a sinner. Oh, what truly good news it is to hear that Christ came to save sinners. That is what St. Paul says to us this morning. He says, The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance that Christ came into the world to save sinners. And Jesus himself reminds us that those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. Jesus, the great physician, was not born in the flesh, to call the righteous to repentance. He came to call sinners to repentance. There is no one so healthy that he or she does not need a physician. There is no one so righteous that he or she does not need a savior. Oh, how the sinful flesh, that old Adam, hangs on and fights to stay alive, making all kinds of excuses. Oh, sure, I've made a few mistakes, but everyone makes mistakes. After all, to err is human and nobody's perfect. This soothing, faithless confession of our sinful flesh are the lies that we tell ourselves. You may try to fool yourself and say to yourself, well, I've tried, I've done my best, but you have not. You have sinned, you have fallen short of the glory of God. 
Jesus Christ, the great physician, has made the diagnosis. We are, as we regularly confess, poor, miserable sinners. We have the law hanging over our heads. Two paragraphs before our text this morning, St. Paul says this, The law is not laid down for the just, but for, for the lawbreakers and rebels, the ungodly and sinful. You and I are lawbreakers. We've broken God's law. We're outlaws. We stand deserving of his wrathful judgment. When we acknowledge that nothing good dwells within us, that we deserve God's anger because of our sin and our sinfulness, when we confess our sins, then the cure comes breaking over us with the light and the joy and the peace of Christ. Yes, it is God's own truth to say that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Jesus, son of the Virgin Mary and son of God, God born in human flesh, Jesus suffered and died for you. He suffered agony in your place. His death for your life, that great exchange. His blood like a flood washing away your sin and its condemnation. All of this comes to you by the grace of God through faith in Jesus Christ. Earlier we sang, Chief of Sinners, Though I Be. This is St. Paul's grand confession. He calls himself the foremost, the chief, the worst of sinners. In the book of Acts, Paul's companion and friend, St. Luke, has recorded how St. Paul had witnessed the brutal stoning of St. Stephen and of how he then was given permission to persecute the Church of Christ and how he would go about going so far to even throw men and women into prison just because they believe in Jesus. Paul knows the depth of his sin, and he makes no attempt to hide it. And he knows also the height of Jesus' love, and he writes, for, But for that very reason I was shown mercy, so that in me, the worst of sinners, Christ Jesus might display his unlimited patience as an example for those who would believe on him and receive eternal life. End quote. Is it not the best of news to hear that Jesus came into the world to save sinners? Chief of sinners, though I be, Jesus shed his blood for me. To thee, King, eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.